All right, so um, in this video, um, I have a training uh, blade here. It is part of a set of uh, Espada y Daga, or long and short, or uh, sword and dagger. And these are aluminum training blades that I have here. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna show a way to wrap the uh, handles, and I'm using 550 cord to do it. And uh, I think it's just kind of a slick way to do it. There's many different ways to kind of do this. But that's just to, you know, make sure you have a, a good grip on it while you're training. And again, these are aluminum training uh, blades. And these were made for me uh, some years ago. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just replicating a, a version that, I'm, that I've seen on some other my, my other training equipment. This particular one has a lanyard to it. So I can hold on to it. Just use the noise in the background watching uh, John Wick, uh, the first one, actually. Shout out to David Leach. Uh, much, uh, uh, I'm, um, I'm happy for his success out there in Hollywood doing his thing. Uh, at any rate, um, please excuse the background noise. Uh, I'm gonna use this video to kind of show how I'm gonna you wrap you can wrap your uh, your training dagger uh, handles. All right, so um, I'm going to wrap, or um, my intention is to wrap this handle, and I'm going to use um, black uh, 550 cord similar to this one here. And uh, it's a little hard to show how this is supposed to look, or at least the pattern. Uh, I would like to think so. I'm going to break this up and using um, I use the fisherman's knot um, here. I have another channel, uh, the Urban Aboriginal, if you are interested in bushcraft and uh, Aboriginal and primitive technologies. So knowing your knots is important. And I'm just using a fisherman's knot to tie these together. I have a white piece of cordage and I have a piece of 550 cord just to make sure that there's a color distinction uh, to help uh, you understand how this is. I'm actually wrapping this because I think using black um, might not work so well on camera here. So I'm just going to show you the pattern up front here, up close. Um, but then I'm going to demonstrate the wrap on my larger blade, aluminum blade again, that was made for me um, some years ago. Let's see, I got to buff out the dents in this. Um, you've used it a lot over the years. Uh, but this is how it was made for me. I really want to get rid of this edge. This is too sharp. Uh, for for good training but um, it feels good it works pretty well um, it's if it was a little longer it'd be a good uh, carbri carbrang uh, sword carbri carbrang is the uh, weapons form of uh, the Thai boxing uh, is actually where Thai boxing or Muay Thai comes from uh, it's it's um it's a military martial art of Thailand and they use two big heavy blades it's really interesting to watch uh, when you see two good uh, Cabri Cabran practitioners using it. So this, the, the, this, that, this that was made to me has a long handle and these long handles help counter balance the, uh, the heft of the, uh, the, the blade tip here. And so um, I like using it for that. Also for, for Filipino martial arts it works pretty well as, uh, as well. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate on this one how I like to wrap this. And so, uh, just to show you the wrap, and then I'll show you how I start, because we have two holes, we have two holes drilled into the, the, this aluminum handle, right? There's a hole here and a hole here. Um, I'd like this hole to be a little further down, but um, again, this was made for me. Uh, I didn't make it. Uh, so we're gonna work with these holes here. So essentially, I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna wrap this around like so and then uh, on one side I want to take my black and wrap over the white and then this is gonna go over the side here so make sure this is on screen and I want to kind of create this configuration like that right so the black is over right? so when I flip it over to the other side I want to now 
go under. So white's gonna go under and black, or white's gonna go, yeah, white's gonna go over and black's gonna go under. So on opposite sides, it's gonna be different, all right? So when I flip this over again on this side, all right, this time black is gonna go over and then white is gonna go under, okay? So I hope this is showing up on screen, kind of this pattern, okay? And then this is gonna be the opposite. And once you get the pattern going, you, you, you won't get lost because you'll realize if you follow your previous pattern, which way you should be going, okay? And that's why I wanted to do opposite colors because it'll be much easier to uh, show on camera the differentiation of how this would, should work out. Right. And then I'm going to flip this over and again forgive the background noise and then I'm going to go over the top here and then like so. So what's, what's, what's happening here is I'm creating a ridge down the middle, as you can see, the difference between the black and the white. And as you start to do this, you start to cinch things up and you can use your fingers to massage things so that you have a, a nice straight ridge line as you as you continue to your your wrapping. Okay. So I'm gonna go on this opposite side so the black or the white goes under on this side. And then on the opposite side go uh, over the top with the black on this side here like that right okay. and there's many different ways of wrapping there's many different ways to do this and um, I'm just making this as a really quick video um, there's lots of research um, since um, we have had uh, exposure to uh, the Japanese katanas and the swordsmiths that make them and how they wrap the handles which is very elegant but simple uh, it's called shibui in Japanese there's a, there's, there's a Japanese aesthetic uh, it's known as uh, shibui and the Japanese are very known for having this shibui, shibui that um, that 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 you know especially those of us that, that, that study Eastern martial arts um, tend to be drawn to and this is this wrap is somewhat uh, reminiscent of the type of wrap that they do around the handles of the katana. Um, they're using a cord. I don't know it specifically. We'll research this and I'll research this and 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 and, and uh, we'll probably regurgitate the the information later on down the line but but this is kind of reminiscent of this type of wrapping um, and using cordage uh, cords to uh, to do this, um, to create a grip that as we're training, or even if this was a weapon uh, for actual combat, our hands won't slip. And depending on what the material you're making it out of, uh, as uh, sweat and blood uh, gets into the cordage and the grip, um, it makes the grip that much more tighter and stickier. All right. Cause sometimes, depending on what you're holding on to, if it gets wet, whatever you're holding on to, and you get you get you, your hands can become sweaty or whatever, they can slip, and then it becomes a problem to hold on to. Um, but there's a there's a there's an art and a science behind this sort of thing. And again, this is you know uh, hundreds thousands of years of of combat evolution from my point of view. At any rate, this is quick and dirty. I just wanted to show this. Um, using the the opposite um, coloring so you can kind of get an idea it can be much prettier what I, what you do is you kind of scrunch these up you make them tight you can massage the ropes into place and you know massage the ridges in there so you so it can look real pretty you can get real fastidious about this um, and the same thing on this side right so this is this is how you do this particular wrap okay so um, I demoed how the wrap 
works and hopefully that was visible and, and understandable. Um, now I'm actually using this 550 cord or paracord or whatever you want to use. Um, and the idea, the question is going to be length. How much are you going to need for this? Um, what I've done here is I've kind of taken this and kind of wrapped this around my handle. Again, forgive the background noise. John Wick. Watching. Um, and I've kind of figured out the approximate uh, uh, length from hole to hole, or at least from... from from this hole to the uh, end of the handle there. And then I'm just taking my uh, cordage here and I'm just going to wrap this about like so. And again, this is an approximation, it's not exact. So for those people that are out there that gotta have them numbers, um, I'm giving you a possible way to measure this. It's probably a more mathematical way to do this. Um, this is more grassrootsy, if you will. Uh, and uh, FYI, this has already been pre-cut, but just to give you an idea of how I've done this, and then I have a little bit left over here, right? But if I was to sp splay these out and count the individual strands, essentially what I want is one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Get this in frame. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So, do this again just to be sure. Essentially, what I want is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 strands across, right, based on the length. So this is kind of what, what we're looking at, right, to be adequate enough to wrap, right? So essentially you can never have too much, right? The, the, the messed up thing with this type of cordage is that you can always be too sharp, okay? So I hope this gives you an idea of how much length you would need, okay? So, um, for the way that this was designed for me, and the way I've seen on many different uh, uh, training blades, uh, handles, is you got two holes here. They're not, they could be a little bit bigger for this, but I'm making it work. When I finish this, I'm gonna show you how I work it, but this is 550 cord, meaning it's uh it's it's paracord and it, it can hold 550 pounds. A strand can hold 550 pounds, um, but inside of it's got a core of seven small white threads. So this is the good stuff, heavy duty survival camping prepping stuff. So that's what I'm using here. And so I want to find exact middle, and then I'm putting what's called a bite or a bend, that's not nomenclature or jargon. And I'm just gonna stick it in the hole here, right? And I can kind of twist it and it'll force its way in there. Once, once I've got this loop through there or the bite through there, like so, then I can take one end and I'm going to feed it through the loop. All right. So there's many different ways to do it. This is the way I'm doing it. If you have a different way, this is a way, not the way. Again, it's a way, not the way. So if there's a different way to do it, feel free to share. So, and then I'll take this other end and I loop it through the other side. So we have a configuration like this, right? Okay, so then what I can then do now is I can start to pull the loop from this side and cinch it up. And that's on there. 
nice and tight as I pull these through. Okay, so we have this configuration. Then I go ahead and I wrap, similar to how I did it before, but I'm working with a longer piece of uh, cordage, right? So on one side, I'm gonna twist over. I'm gonna position this this way. On one side, I'm twisting over, and then I flip it over. On the other side, I twist under. Right? And if you ever get lost, you just on each side you just follow what you just did. Right? So when I flip it over on this side, now I know that this one here went over, so that means I I flip it over or crisscross them over. Like that. Right? When I flip it over, I can realize that okay, this side now goes over my right side goes over All right and then as I start to build these these twisting and these loops what I start to do is I want to make sure I keep a nice alignment on the connection the vein we'll call it the vein the vein being connected here and basically all the loops are connected nicely and it looks aesthetic right and as it gets tight or as I go to get some length on here I'm gonna start kind of packing or squinching these down make it nice and tight kind of massage these edges build up this ridge or the vein as I go down so it's just a process of just continuing looping this through when we get okay so I went on ahead and uh, twist you know uh, twisted the uh, 550 cord on the handle of my uh, faux or practice blade here and I'm at the end or at the end of this other circle here now what's happened is that this circle is not big enough this hole isn't big enough to really accommodate um, the full width of both of the cords being pushed through at the same time so what I've had to do with this 550 cord is I've had to kind of cut it at an angle Let's see if we can get a good good angle of this and kind of make it a sharp point all right because it, uh, it's it, this is synthetic so you can kind of mold it a little bit be careful don't burn your fingers uh, with a lighter and uh, so what I want to do is now that I've got this all packed down and shaped and it's formed correctly on here um, let's see this is the short end I'm gonna take the long end here and this will fit in through just nicely perfectly right it'll just go right through there stick that up pull that through okay now there's just a in this diameter this is a wee bit of space I don't know if you can see that but this is a wee bit of space a little bit of space that I need to try and get that through so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull this out just a little bit but I'm also going to cinch this down so that I have enough um, enough uh, space uh, to pull the other in through, right? And it's a little bit harder to try to do this on camera, but because this is basically plastic nylon is what we're working with, and it's melted, it's sharpened, so I was able to poke it through because I made a little tip, all right? This, just, just the tip make a tip right so what I can do then now and you can see on the other side it's kind of pulling through a little bit so what I can do now is kind of help it and pull this through if not just straight pull it through the other side so that's just kind of a little bit of a uh, a tip hopefully and then uh, you know I probably could have made one more round there and in fact we're gonna do that because it's not as tight as we can do all right so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pull this back through again, because we already did it once, I think we'll be good. <clears throat> Alright, so, on this side, I'm flipping it this way. Alright, uh, make sure, yep. And then, I flip it over. 
on this side. This cordage goes over top of the other cordage and goes the opposite way. Right? Just like that. And then I'm gonna flip it over again. What I need to do is now I'm I'm losing width, right? I don't have a lot of length on this one. Alright, so I need to tie this off. So what I'm gonna do is now on this side I'm gonna go ahead and stick this through the hole here on the other side. That's through the hole, but not all the way through, because then now I can kind of stick my the tip that I made, the false one, through and kind of poke this through. Pull that. Uh -oh. Pull that through. And then, yeah, there we go. And then and pull the rest through, right? And then kind of make sure that this lays in place properly. Lays in line. And pull stuff tight. And just all right so and then you can kind of start to push and wedge and shape uh, your formation at this point okay because it's, it's pretty much in there now okay so uh, before I finish this off I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna give you a couple of options so this is my shorter blade here this is the uh, Daga the shorter blade this one's the Espada or the longer blade the uh, sword. This is the the short stiletto or the short, sh the shorter uh, blade for long and short. Or espada y daga in Filipino martial arts, which is a derivative of uh, the uh, long and short for both uh, Spanish and Italian uh, long and short uh, sword play. Um, I'm going to use this uh, piece of paracord to. Uh, demonstrate how to make a lanyard like this if you want to right and paracord is uh, rather I should say 550 cord is very very uh, durable paracord is not the true 550 cord um, uh, for this sort of work either one works is fine but I would choose 550 cord but this will create your your uh, lanyard for if you lose or you lose grip of your weapon in training, right? You can do it this way, and all I did was just tie an overhand knot because at this stage, this is what we, what I would do is just tie an overhand knot. But if you have extra long cordage, then what you can do is connect them like so uh, using your uh, using a, a, a flame. So once I cut this. Once you cut this, I'm just going to make a fresh cut to demonstrate this. Like so, and that's a fresh cut. Move these out of the way. And I can just take these, and then I can go and just kind of heat them up. This is all this is, is plastic. You gotta be careful and then stick these together. Try not to burn yourself. Alright. Bond these together like so. Quickly and carefully push them together. Okay? You don't want to burn yourself. Then let them cool. You can kind of blow on it a little bit. And then kind of mash these together a little bit. You can use a little bit of heat on this uh, connection. Smash them together a little bit. Be careful not to burn yourself. Kids, don't try this at home without parental supervision. If you need that. Like so. 
so. And then you created a connection with your your uh, your um, paracord, your 550 cord. Okay, so that's essentially what I did with this. So it's one way to finish. It's one way to finish off uh, this if you'd like to. You can do that. Do it this way. For this, um, there's not enough. I mean, I could do. I could do it this way. But I don't want to. Rather, I, yeah, I, don't, I was off camera. I could do it this way, like this. I don't want to, so I'm just going to tie two overhand knots and call it a day. Like that. With tight. Another one. Just like that, two overhand knots like that. That's one way to finish it off. I take my scissors here, cut them close, cut them, cut the other one close, and then I can use my lighter to make sure that they singe the end ends so that they don't come undone. Kind of almost, kind of singe the knot so it's almost semi-permanent. Because it's just plastic, they'll melt. It'll melt together. All right. Be careful not to burn yourself. And there you have it. So, this is a method of wrapping. Uh, even you know, even even if this was a weapon, a true weapon, one way to do it quickly. If you have some cordage of some sort, I'm using 550 cord. Some people call it paracord. Um, <clears throat> and this is just one way to make it so that you can have a good decent grip on your training blades or your, even your, your 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 actual weapons so hope this helps